Hi, I'm Lucy from So Essential and I'm here today to share my latest make with you. Everything I talk about is available on our lovely website and you'll find links to all the products I mentioned below. And if you like what you see today, please like and subscribe because every Friday I bring you a video packed full of sewing goodness. If you can't waste a whole week, do jump on and check out our social media accounts. We're in all the usual places and I've linked those below. The dress I want to share with you is this lovely red sundress in one of our beautiful cotton lawns. It's a red paisley print which I really like because I think it's just nice to have a change from floral and plus I'm just so in love with bright reds at the moment. I also love lovely vibrant greens as well, they're the colours I'm really enjoying wearing at the moment. Um, and as soon as I saw this cotton lawn, I thought I definitely need to make something with that. I just love it. I love the print. I love the colour, everything about it. Um, but it took me a while to make my mind up on this dress because I think actually this cotton lawn is very versatile. So I think it would also make beautiful blouses and shirts that would be great for autumn winter as well layered up with cardigans and jackets um, but in my head I thought no I want to make a nice dress with it um, and eventually I came up with this idea I thought I want a nice fitted bodice with a sweetheart neckline and a tiered skirt and I couldn't find a pattern that fit the bill perfectly so I used a pattern for the bodice which I'll talk to you about in a minute and then I self-drafted this two-tiered skirt I'll just hop up on here so that you can see the length it's sort of just above the knee I think um, so I self-drafted that, but what I'll do is I'll put a link to a tutorial that I did a while back on how to calculate the tiers if you want to do something similar. Um, I'll tell you how to calculate the depth of the tiers and also the width of the tiers. And it's really simple and really easy. And I'm just pretty obsessed with tiered skirts at the moment. I think this is the third time I've made a dress with a tiered skirt. I think maybe that's enough for now. Um, but yeah, it's just a really lovely process and it's really easy to do. So I will share that with you and link that below. Um, I did line, the bodice is supposed to be lined anyway. And then I did line the skirt. Um, I self lined it with the cotton lawn. So I just made like a simple A-line um, skirt to put underneath and I'll show you the insides of that later in the video. Um, but that was just because it is slightly translucent, this cotton lawn is, so I just felt that it did need lining. Um, but yeah, I'm absolutely delighted with the dress, can't wait to wear it. Um, hoping we'll get some nice hot sunny days here in the UK, but also I'm going overseas towards the end of the year. So um, it will definitely, definitely come in useful on that holiday. And I just wanted to show you, I think it looks lovely, this fabric with a nice light denim as well. It's just a really nice casual look for summer, ca nice casual day look, um, especially with those tears. I just think it's got that sort of romantic summer vibe about it. So yeah, I'm really happy with this make. And it was pretty straightforward and easy to do as well. So let me talk to you about the pattern. The pattern I used for the bodice was McCall's 8103, which is a pattern that actually comes with cup sizes. So that's great because um, if you're small busted or fuller busted, sometimes you might need to adjust patterns to get a better fit. And this kind of gets you more in the right ballpark from the word go. Um, if you're fuller busted, you can use the CD cup and you might not have to make a full bust adjustment. Or if you do, you might not have to adjust it as dramatically. Um, I'm small busted, so I use the AB cup. I did still have to alter things slightly and I'll talk you through that. Um, later on in the video but it is useful to work with these patterns with cup sizes it just gets you in a better starting point than um, you know a pattern that's just drafted for a B cup. Um, so there's three views with it all of the views the straps are supposed to be thicker than the ones I chose so if you are somebody who prefers to wear a bra and do, like doesn't want your bra straps to show, the thicker straps will cover those bra straps up. Um, I'm quite happy to wear like a strapless bra um, and you know I realise that that doesn't probably do much for my small bust but I'm just at an age where I really don't care about that so I, I quite like the thin straps and I was kind of thinking when I'm out in the sun as well um, you know it's, the strap marks won't be as sort of uh, pronounced as if it was a thicker strap but there are options there for you to 
easier to make a thicker strap if that's what you prefer. Um, so it's got cups with darts that come up from a wide cummerband which runs around the waist and then there's options for three skirts so there's a pencil skirt with waist darts and then there's a lovely sort of A-line wrap-over skirt with a dipped hem, which I think I might be tempted to make that version as well. And then there's also a version with a peplum and um, the wrap-over skirt with the flounce around it. So some really lovely options in this pattern. And then, of course, you could just draft your own skirt like I've done as well. So you could get lots of looks out of this pattern. And once you've got that good fit on the bodice, you know, all you've got to do is like, you know, your pattern's adapted. All you've got to do is just choose which skirt you want to add. So I really like that. Um, the pattern runs in sizes from an 8 to a 24. So an 8 is a 31 and a half bust, 24 weight waist 33 and a half hip and the 24 is a 46 bust 39 waist and a 48 hip um, I made a 10 round the bust and then graded out to a 12 to 14 at the waist um, obviously I had to do that on the front and the back pieces and also on the front you've got the cups and then you've got the cummerband so I had to make sure it graded out on both of those um, in terms of the cups I did have to play around with these a little bit because the bust darts, they, they can be a bit tricky bust darts that come from underneath. Um, very often they're a bit long and they might be a bit pointy um, and certainly they were a bit too long for me. They came up further than my bust point so I had to shorten those. Initially I thought well I'll just try shortening them and see what happens but when I shortened them it made them a lot wider and actually that made them more pointy and I just wanted to show you a little demonstration that I absolutely love um, of how darts work because it's kind of counterintuitive. You think, well, if a dart's wider, I'm taking more fabric out. Um, I'm reducing sort of the width of the fabric. So why does that why does that make a fuller dart? But if you look at this circle, and if I over, if you can see, I've got a Pac-Man slit in there. If I overlap that slit and I overlap it by a lot. So I really sort of do a wide dart. You can see there is a lot of fullness there. Um, so a wide dart will give you much more fullness. Whereas if I only overlap it slightly, you can see there's hardly any fullness there. So people like me with a small bust, you'll need a narrower dart. And people with a fuller bust generally will need a wider dart. Um, but so yeah, shortening them didn't work initially. So um, I had to, it was a bit of a head scratcher and also the darts were a bit too far around the side for me as well. They weren't sort of central. Um, and then in the end I had a brainwave and I thought, oh, actually I've got enough room on this that I can actually just reduce the centre front seam so I can kind of take some more out of that centre front seam. That brought the darts into the centre more and then I shortened them and I just redrafted my own darts and just made them narrower. Um, and I did make a twirl to do all of this. I don't think, oh, I have got that with me today. Yeah, so I did a twirl initially, which helped me to realise what the issues were. Really didn't take me very long. I just used some scraps of cotton in my stash and then what I was able to do is play around with one side to test the fit if I made the alterations um, and I also I think I might have just done like another version you know and I do I do experiment like that and mess around because now I've got the pattern pieces how I want them I know that this bodice fits and I'm happy with the fit and then like I said to you earlier I could just add loads of different skirts make it up in different fabrics the work's done it's an easy sew now um, but in in all honesty what it wasn't that difficult anyway it might take me a couple of hours to faff around and get to a point where I'm happy and then yeah the sewing's just nice and straightforward once you've put that bit of effort in so I quite like I'm quite happy to do that and I feel like I learn a lot through that process as well and um, so as I mentioned earlier the other thing I did was um, I did line the skirt so I just made a simple a line um, to, that would fit round the waist. I used like another pattern that I'd got for an A-line skirt and I just measured it and made sure it would fit the waist. 
um, and drafted that. Um, I haven't had any professional pattern drafting training, by the way. I don't know how to pattern draft. Um, but again, it's just trial and error and practice that's helped me to get to a point. And I'm sure if a professional looked at some of the stuff I'd done, they'd be like, well, that's wrong and you shouldn't do that like that. But do you know what? As long as you're happy with the end result and you're learning and you're enjoying the experience in my book, well, that's all that matters to me. I would love to learn properly at some stage that would be great but at the moment I haven't got the time and I just want to make clothes that I enjoy wearing and I, I like the learning the learning process so I'm happy with that um, but yeah the A-line I just stitched it in at the waist seam and then I left the ends of it when it came to where the zip was going to go I left the ends of it free um, so that then I could get the zip in and then once the zip was in I was able to just hand stitch the last little end bit of the lining um, down and it just looks really neat I'm really happy with it um, I left a V at the back I'll show you all of well show you all of this I left a V at the back um, just to so it's not kind of like so it's because you just want it attached really at the waist so that it will hang properly. You don't want to be attaching it at the side seams or anything. So you do want it to hang um, nicely and not to affect how the overskirt hangs. Um, but yeah, that worked out really well. And the other thing I wanted to talk about was the invisible zip. So um, I've always used basting tape to um, insert my invisible zips. It's a double-sided sticky tape and you just and it washes away you can sew through it it doesn't gum your needle up um, and I've always just applied that down the seam allowances stuck the zip tapes down stitched the zip in place and then over the washing you know it disappears but you can't see it anyway it's under the zip tape um, now I ran out of basting tape and we don't we can't get the old one that I used to use anymore so I had an attempt at inserting an invisible zip with pins and I have to say um, I, th I just had completely forgotten what it was like to do that it's so difficult for the to keep the zip in the right place and for it to not move and I inserted it and I was really unhappy with it I had to unpick it and do it again because it just moved slightly and it just meant that it wasn't level at the top um, so I had a look I thought I know we've got some other products that will do the same job and I found this wonder tape on the shelf which is a prim product and it's exactly the same thing as the basting tape. It's a double-sided sticky tape um, that washes away, doesn't gum up your sewing needle. Um, I used it to insert the zip the second time and was absolutely thrilled with the results. So I'm gonna pop a link to that below for you as well, but I just thought I'd share that little tip because when you always do something you kind of forget why and like how annoying it was doing it the other way, but having that time where I had to try and do it the other way I mean some of you might use pins and think it's great and it might work brilliantly for you every time and that's lovely but if you are anybody who's ever struggled um, this stuff can make a real difference so I thought I'd share that with you as well um, and then the straps I just made thinner as I said so all I did with those was I just folded the pattern piece and I actually used the Ogden cami um, strap that's a cami top that I've made before I just tested it against there because I knew I liked the width of those straps I was like yep that's fine um, and that was it really so yeah I'm really happy that I've just got a lovely casual cool easy to wear day dress um, that I think you know over the summer and over the years I'll get lots and lots of wear of so I hope you've enjoyed that today as I mentioned at the start of the video the pattern the fabric everything all the tools and things I've mentioned they're all all link below so do jump on and check out our lovely website and if you like what you see today please like and subscribe and I'll look forward to seeing you next time